So I did a video a little while back where I protected the sink base with some peel and stick vinyl tiles. I got them for a discount. I only spent a total of like five to seven dollars for this project and I then protected my cabinet. Now there's some feedback saying, hey, what about between the actual tiles? Isn't water gonna get through there? And also a few of you said, hey, you should use Flex Seal. I thought that sounds actually pretty interesting. I've never used that before. Let's give it a shot. So that's what we're gonna do today. Can you spray liquid rubber in a can or also known as Flex Seal on the base of your vanity or sink base to make a watertight seal and basically a rubber pan to catch any water to protect the cabinet itself or especially if you're on the second floor or you have any floors below you to protect any of those floors below so if water ever drips out it's not going down below and causing a bunch of damage. So let's jump in. I'll show you the how to, actually how to do this and test it out by simulating a water leak, dripping a bunch of water onto the cabinet itself and seeing if the flex seal holds. The first step is prep work. Because I want to make a rubber tray, not just cover the bottom with the flex seal, I need to have a little lip all the way around. Now with this vanity, it's a very cheap builder grade vanity, so there's no back to it. So all I did is picked up a piece of lath, which is 3 16 of an inch thick, very thin, cut it to size, and then I just nailed it from the back side of the vanity. Now if your vanity is already against the wall and you need that, no problem. It's thin enough, you can press it down on the back side and probably use some liquid nails and connect it to the wall to keep it to stay. Then once I had that in place, that was about 3 quarters of an inch. I just took a roll of electrical tape, which is about the same height, used the pencil, marked the walls, and then that was my guide for the painter's tape. And then I put down two layers of painter's tape because I'm not sure how much the Flex Seal will overspray. So I wanted a nice barrier there where I would not get it on the side walls of the vanity. Now, if you have a back to like a sink base, you have a back, then you just put the painter's tape on the back side, and then you have a nice three quarters of an inch lip all the way around, which will be covered in Flex Seal. Now, step two, I'm just gonna use some standard tub and tile caulk, and I'm gonna put a nice bead around the corner all the way around the vanity. Now this project assumes that your water lines and your drain pipe go to the back wall. In many cases, they actually come from the bottom, so you might have holes through the bottom. So you're questioning, is this gonna even work in my application? What I would do in that application is those holes I would put a nice healthy bead of this caulk around the hole that was created for the water line or maybe your drain pipe is going through like an S opposed to a P trap. I'd put that all the way around that hole and then when you cover it with flex seal, then you're gonna have that nice little lip and then the water hopefully will not get over that lip and go down onto your floor or onto the ceiling if you're on the second floor. So that's just the idea that I would have if I had the pipes coming from the bottom. So I let the caulk set for a few hours just so it completely set up before I applied the Flex Seal. Now I'm ready to apply my first coat of Flex Seal. I plan on doing two coats. Just something to note so you can plan it out. You do need at least 24 hours between coats to let it fully seal and cure. So I'm gonna apply this coat, wait 24 hours, apply the second coat, wait 24 hours, and then show you the results of the test. Magic of YouTube, you're not gonna have any space in between, but I do need to wait. And if you're doing the same project, just plan that timing out. Additionally, you shake the can up well, and then apply eight to 12 inches away from the surface. Because I've never applied this before, and also it's a, it's a new can, I do wanna run some test stripes. So now I know the tip is ready to go and I can start applying it to the surface. And nice thing is it didn't look like it has too much overspray. Now, because I don't wanna clean this stuff off my hands, I am going to be wearing gloves. And also you should be in a well-ventilated space whenever you're doing a job like this. So let's spray the first coat. So 
So it's been 24 hours. Now the first coat is completely dry and overall looks pretty good. It's a little bit lumpy, not the smoothest finish, but I wasn't really expecting it to be super smooth. The only thing that I'll focus on with the second coat is making sure I get full coverage of the three quarters of an inch lip, but you are fighting this thing called gravity. So it does want to kind of fall down the sides so I'll take a little bit more time and try to get good coverage there for the second coat because this is the last coat. I'll apply the second coat now. So I'll wait 24 hours after applying it to make sure it dries and then I will do the leak test, making sure this rubber tray holds water and the water comes out the front of the cabinet. That is what I would like is if there is a leak, the water comes out the front of the cabinet, so the water would come on like your tile floor, you would step on it, you would notice it, opposed to just sitting in the cabinet base, eating away at the bottom of the cabinet, or worse yet, the water going behind the cabinet, down on the floor under the cabinet, and really creating more damage over time. So that's the plan, but first I'll do the second coat. The second coat is now fully dry and I have removed the tape around that lip. I would recommend using a razor blade and just scoring the bottom of the tape so when you're removing the blue painter's tape, you don't peel off the flex seal. So now for the moment of truth, does this actually work or does water just find its way out and leak below the cabinet? That's the big question. So I've kind of set up a test scenario here. I put down some rosin paper so I will see any leaks underneath the vanity. After we do some leak testing, I'll lift the vanity up and see if there's any signs of moisture drops or a big old puddle. I then put some shims on the backside to make sure the cabinet was just slightly sloped where the water would flow out. Put down a big plastic tray to collect got some water, and then for the vanity top, I actually did install a drain pipe, P-trap, and then extended the pipe up so I can pour water in the top here in the sink, and then I can loosen up some of the P-trap fittings and simulate just a normal leak, which you would really see underneath your cabinet, opposed to just dumping a bunch of water, actually simulating what I see often in sink bases or vanity cabinets. So there's nothing left to do but to test this out and dump some water in the sink. I went ahead and placed about a half gallon in the sink itself and then loosened the back nut on the P-trap. I just wanted the water to start to drip out on the base and pool up, hoping that it would then eventually run out the front because of the way I have the cabinet shimmed. And I'll speed it up a little bit here. And there's also a little bit of a leak on that vertical pipe that's holding the water in. So you'll see the rosin paper in the backs getting soaked when we check later on for the results. But here it's coming out the front. Everything looks to be watertight. It's definitely beating up as you'd like it. And I think it does give you a better barrier than just the stock cabinet, which has a little bit of water resistance. But this does seem to improve the water resistance of the overall cabinet and should make it last longer. So moving the cabinet, you'll see the soaked rosin paper towards the back. That is from that leak we talked about. But other than that, there's like a drop that's up in front, which probably just came from the drip tray. And if the rosin paper represented your subfloor, your subfloor would be uh, dry and not have damage from the water leaking through. So overall, I am happy with the results. And now that I've done the peel and stick tiles and flex seal, I'd say peel and stick tiles is going to be much faster. There's no dry time or any issues like that. You get the project done in like a half an hour. This one's gonna take multiple days because the 24 hour dry time between. Now, if you have a beat up cabinet where the base has some past damage, it's still solid, but has some past damage, maybe that is a candidate for some white flex seal and that will really freshen up the cabinet's look and kind of give it a second life. Flex seal is also a little bit more expensive. So I spent 
five to seven dollars on the peel and stick. A flex steel can, which I only used one can, I could probably do a whole nother coat at least with that can, it was about 11 or 12 dollars. You'll see a link in the description to flex seal on Amazon, which is the same price as what I find it for at the home improvement stores in my area. So what do you guys think? Is this a project that you would actually take on, but no way, it's way too much work for the end result. Always interested to get your feedback, so jump down in the comments and let me know. Now before you take off, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, hit that little red button with the bell notification as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with home repairs and improvements around the house, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.